Here's a couple problems on regression wisdom, chapter 9 of Bach, Bellman, and DeVoe. First one is, chapter, is number 15 uh, about gestation periods versus life expectancy of animals. So what we're given here is a scatter plot of life expectancy in years on the horizontal versus gestation period in days. And they go ahead and calculate the, uh, the R, and it's 0.54. And they note that it's not a very strong relationship. Uh, and the first question they ask is, do you think the association would be stronger or weaker if humans were removed? And humans are the X over here with a very long life expectancy, but not an incredibly long gestation period. So think about that for a sec. If you remove the red X, would the association be stronger? Would it look like there's more of a systematic relationship between life expectancy and gestation? And indeed, it would be. This is an outlier. Um, yes. This is an outlier, and the association would appear really much stronger. Okay, um, and it looks like a positive, a fairly strong, pretty strong positive linear association. Although we'll get into what happens when we just look at these points pretty soon. Okay, um, is it okay to remove humans? Okay, well, so is, does this mean? Um, if, if there's nothing notably or obviously different about humans, about one the, the point we'd like to remove, nothing that we can use as a reason for removing it, then it's pretty dubious to just start taking stuff out. It's called fudging the, your data. But of course, humans are special, okay? Humans are quite different in terms of, you know, society, medical care, etc. So it's okay to remove them. Okay, um, and if you plotted life expectancy, say before modern medicine, a couple hundred years ago, it might uh, actually be quite a bit closer to the graph. Okay, so as long as you can show a reason for removing it and um, justify that, then that's something that's that's important. You can't just remove it just because the numbers seem weird. Okay, now here's the second scatter plot. It's just exactly this plot, but just with the scale expanded a little bit um, of the non-humans. Let's come in on the strength of the association. Well just did that already, it looks like a pretty strong, um, looks like a strong, uh, positive, probably close to linear association, although that's, the linear is a little bit harder to be sure of, okay? But it looks like if you can kind of picture a straight line going through, it doesn't look so bad, okay? And so in fact, that's exactly what they do in the next part. They actually give the regression, let me scoot this up a little bit. Okay. They actually give the regression line, as you would get from a calculator, the predicted gestation, that's a big hat over gestation there, the predicted gestation on the regression line is negative 39.5 plus 15.5 times life expectancy. Now notice this negative already tells you do not try to extrapolate, and they make a big point in this section, don't try to extrapolate to say zero life expectancy would give negative gestation. Well, neither is particularly meaningful, but this is the, the formula we get. And the more important thing is really the slope of the regression line. That tells you how changing this variable is predicted to change this variable. Okay, so let's comment on that. So what's, first of all, the units, the slope, it's always the thing in front of the variable here. The slope is 15.5 uh, days per year, or really days of gestation per year of life expectancy. And so, oop, gestation. Every additional year of life expectancy that an, um, one animal has over another, you'd predict that it would, they'd need 15 and a half days more of gestation. And so the animals that tend to be longer lived are, um, tend to have a longer gestation period. And very roughly, we've got 15.5, okay? Notice, I don't know if you can read this here, the R squared, uh, it turns out to be 72.2%. Now remember, that's not a guarantee. Just because that number's high, it's not an gu absolute guarantee that this is a good regression, but it's a good sign that there is this fairly strong association. So it says that almost three quarters of the variation can be accounted for by put just putting a straight line relationship. And only about a quarter is then a residual variation. Okay, so this is uh, the slope. Back to the slope real quick. The slope is positive, as we expected, uh, indicating that longer lived animals require more gestation. And it's not clear why. Maybe there's a lurking variable. Maybe they're just bigger. 
maybe longer lived animal, maybe being a bigger animal helps you be longer lived. It seems like that's true by sort of a casual observation. Houseflies don't live a long time, but um, larger animals like elephants do. Um, and maybe they just require more gestation. So maybe there's not a causal effect here, but uh, just an association. Okay. Um, but even if it's not a causal effect, if it's something that's true somewhat universally, then we can still use that association. Um, if a monkey has a life expectancy of 20 years, what will be the predicted gestation period? And there's no guarantee this is going to be a very accurate prediction, but it's, it's a good place to start. And we just plug it into the, the formula. We just take this guy and we plug in 20 years for life expectancy. I'm going to put that in math mode, otherwise we're probably going to get confused. And we just plug that in and calculate. And it's 270 days. So we'd predict, so this is right around in here, we'd predict something like 270 days of gestation. Um, nine months, basically. So about as much as a human, even though the life expectancy is a lot less than a human. But remember, the humans were an outlier. Okay, so now let's continue a little bit more on this scatter plot. They just re redraw it here with red dots for no particular reason. And they talk about, um, there's a couple of points off to the far right which are a bit of a concern. They are uh, maybe a little bit weird from the perspective of, of this scatter plot. Okay, so the first question they ask, by removing one of these two points, so this is elephants, you probably can't see it, but this is elephants and this is hippos. You probably could guess that that was elephants, huh? Um, well, I don't know. It could have been something else. Tortoises, maybe. Okay, elephants and, and hippos. Oh, yeah, they're not mammals. Tortoises. So, anyway, um, here's elephants and here's hippos. And it says, by removing one of these two points, we could make the association stronger. Which one should we remove? So, imagine removing each one of those points and, s and sort of picture it. Does it seem more like a straight line? Does it seem like there's a stronger association? Well, the, if you remove the hippos, you've still got this straight line with this significant positive slope that seems to go through the elephants. And in fact, the elephants are probably a big reason, because um, they're out here, why the line is going in a particular direction. If you remove both of them, the association would probably get quite a bit weaker. Um, but certainly removing um, hippos would make it very nice. So the hippos seem like they are not helping the pattern here. They are surprisingly low gestation for their life expectancy. Okay, so the hippos um, are, I don't know, that you could say they're close to being an outlier here. And removing them would make the association stronger. You, I don't think you could say they're really an outlier. But they're the thing that's going to be farthest from the, the best fit line, if you can imagine it putting, putting it in here. Okay, would the slope increase or decrease by doing that? if you take out the hippos. Well, you take out the hippos, that's a low point, it's going to make the slope bigger. So probably this, you'd have a line just like about like that without the hippos. The hippos probably drag it down so that it shoots under the elephant. Um, and so the slope would increase if we removed the hippos. And it's really helpful to just try to picture lines. Ske you could even sketch a line on here. Um, trying to figure out what's going to look best. And if you have those hippos, it's trying to get so that the residual of the hippos is, is low, and so it's going to drag it down. Without the hippos, it's going to go like this. Okay. And, okay, well, if we can make the association stronger by removing the hippos, why don't we just keep removing animals until we get a super, super strong association? Okay. Um, so obviously, no. We, we shouldn't do that at whim. Okay. Because this is reality. This is the real world. The association just might not be that strong. If we start remo removing many, many animals, removing animals takes us away from the real world of diverse, well, let's say animals. Okay. If you're not using a lot of data, then you might be have an unrealistic assumption about how strong or how simplistic the world is. So you, that's definitely not a great strategy to just remove them. Again, if you had some reason to say, I know hippos are different, and I know all the other animals I'm ever going to consider in the future don't have that difference. For example, we could remove humans because it's easy to tell if we're talking about a human. Like with the monkey that we did at the end of the previous example, we didn't have to say, oh wait, maybe the monkey has access to amazingly good medical care and um, has high education and all these kinds of things. 
Um, they don't. And so we could tell that this is just inapplicable. Maybe there's something very special about hippos that we can use uh, and we can really figure out the science of this and say, oh yeah, hippos are different. And I know that if I consider some other species and use and try to predict it using a regression line, I know that it's very different from hippo. But that's unlikely. Um, so we probably shouldn't just keep removing animals unless we have a good reason for it. Can't just be from the numbers, has to be from the actual science. Okay, um, if we remove elephants, Instead, the slope becomes 11.6 days per year. Notice that's as opposed to 15.5. That's a big difference, okay? And so, in fact, the elephants were influential, okay? They probably did not have a big residual because it just exactly because they were influential. The line probably came pretty close to them, but taking them out um, means that it's going to be more like down here. It's going to be closer to the hippos. This stuff, actually, you can believe a pretty low slope for the association. The elements were influential since the slope change a lot when they were taken out. Okay, So they were not an outlier, uh, but they were influential. They had high leverage. Okay, They had high leverage because of their large x value. The large value of this life expectancy means that if you want to nail the line well and get a small residual for the elephants, you better pay a lot of attention to that height of the elephants. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a big residual for this. And so that's why the elephants are quite influential for this problem. Okay.